Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be looking at f of x, g of x, and h of x and evaluating things like this. f of, let's say, g of 2. So in Algebra 1, you would just be doing g of 2. But in Algebra 2 and higher, you would have to first find what g of 2 is and then find what f of that is. So what you do first is you plug in 2 into g, which would be 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5, because 2 times 2 plus 1 is uh, just equals 5. And really what you're doing now is figuring out what f of 5 is. So once we get that value of 5, you plug in the 5, which is going to be 5 squared. I'm plugging it into the f of x, plus 3 times 5, which ends up being 25 plus 15. 25 plus 15 is 40. So that means this whole thing, this f of g of 2, is equal to 40. And there are a few different ways you could write it. You could write it this way, but it also could have been giving you the exact same problem, f of g of 2. I kind of like this first way better, but this is the exact same problem. This one right here, that, that's the exact same problem. All right, so let's do another one. Let's make it a little bit more difficult, though. Let's do, um, let's do g of f of h of 4. Hope I have enough parentheses. So g of f of h of 4, blah, 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 blah. You start by plugging 4 into h. Well, if we plug in 4 into h, that would be the square root of 4, which, of course, is 2. All right? And then we're going to have to figure out what is f of 2, because we just figured out h of 4 is 2. That means I plug in 2 into that x squared. Well, 2 squared plus 3 times 2 makes uh, it's, it's a number. 4 plus 6 is 10. And then I would finally have to figure out what is g of 10, which would be 2 times 10 plus 1 because we're plugging in 10 into g, and 2 times 10 plus 1 is 21. So that whole thing just equal 21. All right? So it doesn't get much harder than that. You just take one number, you plug it in, and then you work your way down from the inside towards the outside as you go forward. Now, I have seen some variants of the problem. I'm going to show you a variant. Um, when you get to the harder, harder problems, that will do like a two in front, two times. Let's do something simple. Um, G of F of, let's go with negative three. Okay? So if there's a two in front, oh boy. The, forget the two's even there. At the very end, we're going to multiply by two. So negative three squared, plug in the squared, uh, plus three times negative three. Negative three squared is nine, because that's negative three times negative three, which is nine. And then three times negative three is nine, which is zero. So this is a very interesting problem because it equals zero, which normally makes people panic. Oh no, what happened? Not a big deal. We got zero from the f of negative three. Two times g of zero means we plug in zero. That would be two times zero plus one, which ends up being one, because two times zero is one. Two times zero is zero, plus one is one. That means everything here equaled one, but then there's still this times two. I did not deal with the times two yet because the only times two I did was here, but that wasn't the same thing as the two in front. So this one gets multiplied by the very two that I have been forgetting about this whole time, and two times one, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is two. All right, so that is going to do it for this one. Until next time, stay positive, and I will see everybody later. Bye.